day, dear students. How are you? Good to hear. Today is a great day to learn, and I welcome you in my science class. Of course, I would like to introduce myself. I am Mrs. Irene Tongon Franco, your science A teacher. So, we will start our lesson with a preliminary activity. The title of the activity is Push or Pull. And here's the instruction. I'll be plusing pictures and you have to determine whether the situation in the picture shows a push or pull action. You have 10 seconds per item to think of the correct answer. Are you ready to learn? Let's begin! Item number one. Push or pull. Ten seconds. The correct answer is pull. Very good. Item number two. Is it push or pull? Ten seconds again. Is it is push item number three? Is it push or pull? Another ten seconds. Yes, it is push. Item number four. Is it push or pull? Ten seconds again. Of course, it is pool. And finally, the last picture. Is it push or pull? 10 seconds again. Perfectly done! It is push. Well done class! Did you know that by doing a push or a pull action, you are exerting force? And force is our lesson for today. And here's our lesson objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of change in the object's motion. And now, let's define force. Force is a push or pull 
or both. Force can be operationally defined based on observed effects. Forces do not always cause motion. Figures on the next slide are examples where forces have tendency of changing the motion of an object or not. In your opinion, did the forces acting on the following objects below cause them to move? Figure number one, a girl sitting on a chair. Did the chair move? Exactly! When you sit on a chair, your body exerts a downward force on the chair and the chair exerts an upward force. Though forces are present, that didn't make the chair move. Figure number two. A boy pushing a wall. Did the boy move the wall? You're right! Even if the boy ex is exerting a force by means of pushing the wall, still, the wall didn't move at all. Figure number three. A woman throwing a ball. Did the woman make the ball move after throwing it? Very good! Once released, the ball will move in the same direction from where the force is applied. Forces can produce changes in motion. Let's discuss this through the observable effect of the force on a ball. The effects of force on a ball. Number one. You push the ball and it will move or roll across the surface of the table. Number two. You push the ball again in the direction of its motion, it moves faster and even faster. Number three. You push the ball on the other side opposite to the direction of its motion. It may slow down and eventually stop. Number four. You push the ball on different direction from its original direction of motion and it changes its direction. In conclusion, force can make the ball or any object move. Move faster, stop, or change its direction of motion. To accurately describe the forces acting on an object, let us examine the figure below. 1. Magnitude It refers to the size or strength of the force. Another, it is commonly expressed in Newton. For meter kilogram second or the MKS system. Dine for centimeter gram second or the CGS system. And pounds for foot pound second or the FPS system. In the International System Units, or the what we call SI, Newton is commonly used, which is named after Sir Isaac Newton, an English physicist and mathematician. 
Next word is direction. It is the points to where the object goes. The direction of the arrowhead indicates the direction of the force. The length of the arrow represents the amount of force or the relative magnitude. Next, we have the point of application. The location of where the force is applied. Number four, the line of action. It is the straight line passing through the point of application and is parallel to the direction of force. We have also two types of forces. One, contact forces. Forces where objects touch or contact with each other. Number two, non-contact forces. Forces where objects do not touch or contact with each other. These forces act over a zone or area called field. We have four types of contact forces. One, or letter A, applied force. A force given to a person or object by another person or object. Letter B, frictional force, is the force acting against or opposite an object in contact with which makes the movement of the object slow down. Friction always opposes the motion of an object. Letter C, we have the normal force. It is the force that acts perpendicular to the surface of the object in contact with. In other words, normal force is the support force where exerted upon an object that is in contact with another stable object and finally we have the tension force tension force is the force applied to string rope chain or cable and there are two types of non-contact forces letter a gravitational force is the force of attraction between two objects. In the case of the Earth, this gravitational force causes objects to fall down to the ground. It makes satellites and smaller objects stay in orbit near the more massive planets. Mass and distance of the two objects affect the gravitational force that holds them. The bigger the masses of the objects are, the bigger is the gravitational force between them. The closer the objects are, the greater is the gravitational force between them. Next, we have the magnetic force. Magnetic force are forces exerted on a field of attraction or repulsion as in the case of magnets and other magnetic material. Force always occurs in pairs. Take note, 
To describe a force, you must know two things. First, you must know the magnitude. And the second, the direction of the force. Example Suppose two teams are playing tag of war shown on the picture in the slide. Its team is pulling with equal magnitude of force force A and force B on the rope but in opposite directions. Neither team can make the other team move. Thus, forces that are equal in magnitude but opposite in directions are called balance forces. Balanced forces do not cause a change in motion. When balanced forces act on an object, at rest, the object will not move. But when you push or pull an object and then it moves, unbalanced forces are present. These forces that cause a change in the motion of an object are called unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces are not equal and in opposite direction. Another example of unbalanced force is suppose that one of the teams in tug of war as shown in balanced forces exerts greater magnitude of force FB on the ground than the other team. The forces applied on the ground would no longer be equal. One team would be able to pull the other team in the direction of the large force. That's the end of our discussion. And now, we will proceed with the assessment. Kindly ready your pen and your paper before we will begin instruction multiple choice choose the letter of the correct answer question number one all of the following describe force except letter a it can move objects. Letter B, it can stop or slow down a moving object. Letter C, always cause motion on objects. And letter D, it can change the direction where the object is moving. Question number two. It refers to the size or strength of the force. A. Magnitude. B. Direction. C. Line of action. D. Point of application. Question number three. If an apple fruit fell on the ground, what force are acting on it? A. A. Resistance only. B. Gravitational force only. C. Applied force and A. Resistance. D. 
a resistance and gravitational forces. Next, number four. When you push a moving skateboard with greater force, what will happen to its motion? A. Its motion will decrease. B. Its motion will increase. C. Its motion will not be affected by the force. And letter D none of the above question number five it is the force acting against or opposite an object in contact with which makes the movement of the object slow down a. Normal force B. Applied force C. Tension force And letter D. Frictional force Number 6 From the figure below in what direction will the box move? A. To the left B. To the right C. No movement at all D. Neither to the left nor to the right From question number 6 what force forces are acting on the box? A. Frictional force only B. Gravitational force only C. Applied force and frictional force D. A. Resistance and gravitational forces Number 8 what is or the force forces acting on a chandelier that hangs on the ceiling? A. Normal force only B. Gravitational force only C. Normal and gravitational force And letter D. Tension and gravitational forces Number 9. A 600 Newton student sits on a chair. How much force does the chair exert on him? A. 0 Newton. B. 300 Newton. C. 600 Newton. And letter D. 1200 Newton. And the last question, number 10. Refer from question number 9. What is are the force forces acting on the student? A. Normal force only. B. Gravitational force only. C. Normal and gravitational force. Letter D. Tension and gravitational forces. Here are the answers of your assessment. Please check your answer. And please be honest. Okay, number one, letter C, two, a, 3, D, 4, letter B, 
5, letter D. 6, letter B. 7, C. 8, D. 9 and 10, C. Okay. You got it. Who got 10? Very good. Okay. Now, let's move to your assignment. Make an advanced reading on the anatomy of falling down and going in circles of quarter one, week two module, as you can see on the slide. Answer, pretest on pages two and three. That's all for today. I hope you had a great time learning in our lesson for today. Again, I am Mrs. Irene Tongol Franco, your Science 8 teacher, saying, stay safe, God bless, and see you again next time.